Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free. Access has a feature that allows it to connect to many different types of external data sources. You have a choice as to how you want to connect the external data in Access. You can either import the external data into a native Access table that you create, or you can try to create a link to the source data. Depending upon the type of link that you create to the external data, you may be allowed to query, add, edit, and otherwise modify the external data as if it were a native access table, but without actually importing the data into the database. Now when you import external data into a database, it's stored as an actual access table. You are then free to use it just as you would any other access table. Changes made to the table are not reflected in the original data source, such as the text file or spreadsheet from which you imported the data. Now when you create a link to an external data source, such as an SQL Server database, Access does not import the table, nor does it change the type of data to which it's linked. A linked table in Access is represented by a right pointing arrow which points at an icon of some kind. The icon shown changes depending on the source data type. Link tables are useful because the link will automatically update the data in the copy and access with changes from the original data source so that you can work with the most current data within the linked table. Also, when you delete a linked table from your access database, it's important to remember that you're only deleting the link or the reference to the data source, not the actual linked data source itself. To either import or link external data to your database, you start by clicking the external data tab in the ribbon. To then make a connection to an external data source, click on the button in the import group that shows the name of the type of external data to which you're trying to connect. Clicking any one of these buttons will open the Get External Data wizard, and this wizard will then lead you on a step-by-step -step process that will allow you to decide whether or not to import the data or link to the data, select the data source, and also save the connection again if needed. Note that the specific steps involved in the Get External Data wizard will vary slightly depending upon the type of data which you're trying to import or link to your current database. So if we wanted to import an Excel spreadsheet, for example, we could click the Excel button, use the Browse button to find the particular spreadsheet that contains the data that we would like to use. Click the Open button. Let's choose to import it into a new table in the current database. Here it shows the worksheets. Choose the one you want. Click Next. If your first row contains column headings in this case, we could check that checkbox and click Next. Here you can select any field shown, change its field name, choose whether or not to index it, change the data type if needed, or if you don't even want to import it, you could choose do not import field or skip. So check all of the different fields, make sure they have what you want, click next. You can choose to add a primary key or not, click next, and then give it a name. Also, it asks if you want to save these import steps. If you check the checkbox and click close, you can choose how to save it and give it a description. You can even create it as a recurring Outlook task if you're using Outlook, and then click Save Import. You can then access it in the future from the Saved Imports button in the Import group on the External Data tab. So here's the data once we've imported it into our access table. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com/free.